You're going to be doing a lot of math and chemistry this year, and a very common question I get from my students at the beginning of the year is, what decimal place should I round my answer to? And starting today and for the rest of the year, you're going to start to know what the answer to that question is. Um, the where you round your answer is based on something called significant figures. And significant figures, the definition of those, it's all the numbers in a measurement. Including the estimated digit. So it says there in green, remember all the measurements that you made recently. They all had one uncertain digit, and you took the time to estimate that digit, right? So that means that all those measurements you made had significant figures in them. You just didn't realize it at the time. So if I scroll back to the notes we were working on uh, just yesterday, and we were talking about um, making a measurement, and we said every measurement you make should have one guessed digit that you can see that we highlighted here in yellow, and then a unit as well. And everybody, when you were taking your guesses of how long that line is on the ruler, how much liquid was in the graduated cylinder, your brain took the time to take a guess on what that digit was. And so anytime you make a measurement, those measurements, the numbers in them, we call those significant figures. So you can tell if a number is considered significant when you see it um, on your iPad screens or in a homework problem on a quiz question, if it follows one of these three rules. So rule number one is that uh, you all non-zero numbers, one through nine, are considered significant. They're actual real measured numbers. If I scroll back and we look at that, uh, me those measurements we were taking just yesterday, it would be kind of weird for us to write 0 0.0468 or 0 0.469 if we didn't think that those were the actual measurements of 468, 469, right? So we're going to make the assumption that if you see a number 1 through 9, that it's significant. So what about the number zero? Well, zeros can be a little bit trickier. Those zeros, uh, it might be an actual measured number. So we had one example the other day where we said, what if it lands exactly on the nose, right on the line? <clears throat> and we said this line right here, if it looks to us like it lands exactly on that three, we have this zero. Well, in this case, that zero was a measured zero. We think it's three right on the nose. We might be wrong. It might be 2.9 or 3.1, but we think it's 3.0. So that zero, we did take the time to assess and think about. So it might be an actual measured number, or it might be a rounded number. It's just, I don't know what it is, something about human nature that if you see a number that's really close <clears throat> to a, a factor of 10, that our brains just round it. So if you took a measurement and it was 19.9999998 milliliters, everybody writes down 20, right? Or if it's, um, if you measured something and it was 30.0000001 centimeters, you go, ah, 30 right? It may not actually be that, but there's something human nature-wise when something's close to a factor of 10, we just tend to round it to that um, whole number. So if we rounded a 30.0000001 to 30, we didn't actually measure 30. Or it might just be a placeholder. What if you're measuring something that's really small? And so that really tiny number 
you didn't actually measure the zeros. You measured where the numbers started, but the numbers didn't start until maybe the hundredth place or the thousandth place or something like that, right? So how are you going to know when you're just looking at a number on your iPad screen or on a quiz question um, if those zeros are measured or if they are a placeholder or rounded? We're going to have two numbers to help us decide if we're going to count those zeros as being significant or not. So the first one is, I call it the sandwich rule. And the sandwich rule says, if a zero is sandwiched between two significant figures, then that zero is also significant, meaning it was actually measured. Somebody took the time to figure it out that there was a zero there in a measurement. So if you had these measurements, let's say that all of these guys represent centimeters or something. We put a ruler up to various objects and measured them. If you took this measurement and you got 807 centimeters, Remember how we said anything that's not a zero, we're going to count as being a significant figure. So the eight counts and the seven counts. Now that zero in the middle is in an eight, seven sandwich. And so anytime you have those zeros sandwiched between two other significant figures, we're going to say that that guy counts as well. So the number 807 has three significant figures, three measured numbers. If you look at the next example, anything that's not a zero counts. So the nine, five, three, eight, and seven all count. And then this first zero is in a five, three sandwich, so he counts. This zero at the end is in an eight, seven sandwich, so he counts. That number has seven significant figures. <clears throat> all the numbers were measured. The number 10, the one counts, but there's only bread on the left-hand side of our sandwich. We don't have a right-hand piece of bread. The zero is not sandwiched between two significant figures. So we would say that this measurement only has one significant figure. What that means is the object that the person was probably measuring was truly 9.99999 centimeters or 10.0001 centimeters, and they got kind of lazy and just went, eh, 10. Same kind of thing happens over here with the number 300. The three counts, but those other zeros are not in a sandwich. There's only a left-hand side. There's no right-hand side. So this guy also has one significant figure. What that means is that the true measurement was probably close to 300, but someone kind of got lazy and rounded. Um, so the only true, real, actual measured number, only one of those numbers was really measured. The others are estimated zeros, not measured zeros. If you got a number like 2009, the two counts and the nine counts. So now we have two zeros stuck in the middle of our two and nine. Well, you can have like a Whopper sandwich. All the zeros stuck in the middle count. So this guy has four. Our last example, we know the four, seven, and one count. And then the left zeros here are in a four, seven sandwich, a big whopper, they count. And then all the zeros between the seven and one are in another big monster sandwich, so they count. So this guy has eight significant figures.